So I had this epic five paragraph intro for the RX 480 all lined up ready to go, but as I was writing, I realized you people don't care about that. You want the benchmarks, the thermals, the sound tests, the form factor, the scaling performance, the frame rates, and guess what? I have all of that. I've had the RX 480 for a few weeks now and the opportunity to run extensive tests on the card using my own personal rig, and it has indefinitely removed most any CPU bottleneck in existence for any game out there. I've got a Core i7-6700K overclocked to 4.6GHz, 16GB and two 8GB variants of Gil Superloose DDR4 clocked to 3000MHz, and an ASUS Z170A motherboard. Beyond that, I of course have the RX 480 here. This one is the 8GB variant, which is great because it not only eliminates any potential memory bottleneck in Crossfire especially, but also because it ensures that we can push these cards to their maxes on individual levels. For instance, when I was benchmarking GTA 5 with this card, I had everything maxed out including advanced settings in 1080p, and I was exceeding the 4GB threshold. And indeed, according to MSI Afterburner, I was exceeding that level of VRAM allocation during the benchmark. Having the extra 4GB allows us to focus just on the GPU, which is ultimately what this video will focus on. I should also note that this reference card will be kept to stock frequencies for these tests you're about to see. I'll have a separate video detailing the overclocking benefits of the RX 480 if it's not already in the card right here, stay tuned for that one. So thanks to Samsung and Global Foundry's 14 nanometer FinFET technology, we've got a powerful graphics card that runs off of just one single six pin power connector. Imagine that. The card is slim, measuring just over 23 centimeters in length, three and a half centimeters in height, and nine centimeters when inserted into the motherboard, making it a perfect fit for any ATX or micro ATX build. The actual PCB is much shorter in length, so if you decided to water cool this puppy, you're looking at a circuit board length of about 17 and a half centimeters. And with this style of cooler strapped on board, you're probably wondering what are the temperatures like? Well, after running Heaven Benchmark for 30 minutes straight at max 1080p settings, the RX 480 only peaked at 78 degrees Celsius, making it much cooler than the reference R9 390, and actually even cooler than Nvidia's own GTX 970 after the same 30 minute period. The blower style cooler equipped with the RX 480 is actually pleasant to the ear, not indicative of the classic R9 290 leaf blower a few years back. Have a listen to different distances from the card while under load. I would let you listen to audio at idle, but there isn't any because the card's dead silent even at a crispy 39 degrees Celsius. In fact, you don't start hearing much of anything at all until past 60 degrees Celsius when the fans speed up to a couple thousand RPM. The same fan speed in a reference 290 would honestly have you convinced that your neighbor was mowing his lawn. So big improvement on the cooler design all around. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, the entree, the main course, the number one with a large fry. Okay, I'm gonna stop now. <laughs> Here are the gaming benchmarks. Let's start off first with 3D Mark Firestrike, where we find our RX 480 creeping in nice and snug between the GTX 970 and R9 390, and keep in mind for about 100 US dollars less than both. So no, right off the bat, the RX 480 is not on par with the GTX 980, as many of you assumed, at least at stock speeds, but that's for another video. Heaven Benchmark yields much of the same. The RX 480 doesn't stand out on its own, but again, considering the fact that this card is about the same price as the GTX 960, we're pulling ample performance from this thing. Let's hop into GTA 5. This game's a great blend of both CPU and GPU intensive segments, and unsurprisingly, we find the 480 keeping up with both the R9 390 and GTX 970 across the board. The maximums and minimums were a bit lower for the 480, but a decent overclock should correct these issues. And given the thermal headroom of this card, we've got plenty of frequency to play with. Bumping up the resolution and dialing down a few settings evens out the playing field. In this scenario, all three cards are relatively even, making the RX 480 a great candidate for 1440p gaming with Grand Theft Auto. In Hitman, 1080p is a piece of cake. In fact, in this instance, we find the 480 overtaking the 390, a card which this game was bundled with at one time. The same goes for DirectX 12. Not much changes for the 480, but the minimums of both the older gen cards drop by a significant amount. And in case you're wondering, bumping the resolution doesn't change the fact that the 480 still takes the cake. For a game like City Skylines, the CPU picks up a lot of the slack, especially when zoomed in super close. 
Here, for reasons unknown, the RX-480 struggles. In fact, this is one of the only games on our list where the RX-480 doesn't keep up with or surpass the other two. The average ended up at just under 73, 20 frames below the 390 and 30 frames below the 970. Again, overclocking the 480 could change things, but for now I'm leaving things at stock because believe it or not, people will purchase their 480s and just throw them into their rigs and not tweak with anything and just start playing games. So that's why these are the stock frequencies. I have a separate video for the overclocked frequencies that's coming very soon if it's not already up. Total War Warhammer, from a series also known for its CPU intensive tendencies, reveals a very good story, in this case the RX 480 keeping up with its more expensive competitors. Our averages for both the 480 and 970 were within the margin of error, and our frame rate dips remained on par with each other as well. Last on this list is Rise of the Tomb Raider. I have saved this one for last because, well, the game isn't entirely optimized yet. It was at one time bundled with the GTX 970, making this test undeniably a bit biased, but bear with me, there's a reason I've included this one. The 970 is the clear winner across the board, 95 versus 69 for the averages, and twice the minimum frame rates, enough said. However, running things in DirectX 12 mode changes things a bit. Maybe not for the averages, I mean, it's fairly obvious that the 970 is still dominating this game, but for the minimums, the RX 480 and 390 for that matter, outperform the Nvidia counterpart. This sheds a bit of light into the current situation involving DirectX 12 and the two graphics card developers. Thanks to hardware-based asynchronous compute and better DirectX 12 driver optimization, the red team still holds on, at least for the minimums, in a game designed with the opposing team in mind. Don't believe me? Then have a look at 1440p DirectX 12 performance. Here, the RX 480 is actually the winner. With an average frame rate of just over 48, the RX 480 outperforms even the GTX 970 in a game it wasn't even designed around. I wanted to do something a little different for this last benchmark I'm about to show you involving Ashes of the Singularity. This game's super savvy in its benchmarking techniques. Here we have both the GTX 980 Ti and GTX 1070, where the 980 Ti just barely takes the cake. If you missed that video on our channel, go ahead and click the card right here. Guess what I'm about to do? I'm gonna throw the RX 480 into this mix. Seems a little unfair, right? Just, just bear with me, you're gonna, you'll see. It's not as bad as you think. There, that's it. Honestly, not bad at all, at all. This card is less than half the price of either of these cards currently, well, in most cases, and I can't complain about its performance here, I, I just can't. When I crossfire two of these, then we'll see who really is the king of the $400 club. I invite you to check out some of our older videos if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button if you haven't already, and give this video a like if you thought it was cool, give it a dislike if you didn't think it was cool or if you just hate everything about life, and stay tuned for the overclocking benchmarks with the 480 and a super cheap AMD build featuring the 480 as well, I'm talking under 400 bucks, and I'm going to throw that card into that build, should be very interesting folks. This is Science Studio, thanks for learning with us.